everyone loves cinnamon buns. This is a little bit of a take on a different kind of cinnamon bun. Mine is going to include uh, a pear, pears and frangipani mixture. So it's going to be a pear almond cinnamon bun. First, we have to proof our yeast. I've got a half a cup of warm milk. And to that, I'm going to ask two and a half teaspoons of yeast, active dry yeast. And I'm just going to mix this up. And this now has to sit just like this at room temperature for about 10 minutes to proof before we can move ahead. Now we can proceed with the rest of the recipe. In my mixer bowl, I have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add to that a third of a cup of sugar and one and one half teaspoons of salt. And I'm going to just give that a little mix up on the mixer. All right, now to that, I'm going to add five whole eggs, one at a time, and then I'll add the yeast. I'm going to take it off and scrape it down and add the yeast at the same time. Okay, here goes our yeast. And then after this is pretty well mixed up, I'm going to add into it two sticks of softened butter. This is like a brioche dough, very rich. It's a great bun recipe. So here we go, do some mixing. Let's scrape down a little bit, make sure all that flour is getting mixed in. Our mixture is kind of a shaggy mess right now. Don't worry about that, it'll come together. So I'm gonna put it on low and I'm just gonna start adding the butter until it keeps getting incorporated. And it's gonna get gloppy along the way, but it'll come together at the end. And then it's gonna be a rather sticky dough and we're gonna put it in a greased bowl to rise. But for now, let's do this. And then once all the butter's in, I've got to let this mixer go. Just keep mixing and mixing for six to eight minutes or maybe even longer, who knows, but six to eight is pretty good. So let's go. Give it a little push down here, get the butter inside because it's going off to the sides. There. That's been about eight minutes. It's a very sticky but smooth. 
dough. So I'm going to clean off the dough hook. I have a greased bowl ready. I'm going to put this mixture into the bowl, sticky as it is. And then I'm going to let it rise for one and a half to two hours. And then we'll form our rolls. But again, this has got to sit for like one and a half to two hours. Still very sticky. So I'll come back in about one and a half to two hours. Oh, by the way, in the meantime, while this is rising, I'll show you how to make the almond mixture to put on top of the dough. But first I got to clean up a little bit. While the dough is rising, we can make the almond mixture that's going to be the spread on the dough. And it's, it's a frangipani, actually. Uh, we're going to start off with three and a half ounces of blanched almonds. You want to get them without the um, uh, skin on them. So there's three and a half ounces of slivered almonds. It can be the other kind of almonds, whole almonds or whatever. It's just going to take a little longer to grind up. Now in this bowl, normally with frangipani, you would just use regular white sugar. I'm going to use a um, brown sugar mixer, uh, mixture with cinnamon. This is, I make it myself and I keep it on hand for sprinkling on all sorts of things. So I'm going to use this. I mix it by making one cup of white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, and four tablespoons of cinnamon. And I mix it up well and I just keep it in a covered container handy. So this is going to be one third cup of that. And now I want to grind this up. So this is going to make some noise. I want to grind up the almonds before I add any of the other ingredients. So here we go. Great, nice and ground up. If you don't have almonds and you want to do the same recipe, you can do three and a half ounces of almond flour, then you won't have to grind it up. But anyway, five tablespoons of soft butter. I'm going to go in. Got to get all the butter in there. And one egg yolk. Now some more mixing. And there is our mixture. So I'm just going to put this in a bowl off to the side. You can see how it's darker than normal uh, frangipani would be because of the cinnamon and the brown sugar. But it's absolutely delicious stuff. So I'm just going to put this aside, and when we're ready with the dough, I'll show you how we use it. Our dough is nicely risen. One of the reasons I like to um, proof dough in a glass bowl is because you can see all the little bubbles over here that show that it's growing and it's doing nicely, and it has done very nicely. I have the frangipani uh, over here, the uh, almond mixture that we're going to spread on the dough. I'm going to leave that there for the moment. And now we've got to talk about the pears. Now, what I have here is one 29 ounce can, can of pear halves that I've drained and I've dried on paper towels as best I can. Now, you can do this with fresh pears if you want. You're going to have to peel them them, po poach them somehow until they're soft. You don't want to put hard pears in here. It just, it's, it's too crunchy. This is about the way you want them. And this is really easy to do. All I did was take them out and slice them thin. I'm going to put those aside for the moment. Now, our dough. Let's get some flour out here because we're going to roll the dough. Okay. Now again, this is very, very sticky. rid of that bowl for the moment. But it's, 
it's alive and it's beautiful. Putting some dough, putting some dough, putting some flour on the dough. Now, what I want to do is I want a nice big rectangle. But again, I want this. This is one of the most indispensable tools that you can have in, when you're baking is a, is a scraper. So there we go. A little more there, a little more there. Oh, this dough is absolutely beautiful. It's so full of air. And you can see how yellow the dough is. That's those eggs. It's nice and rich. That's why I like this dough for my buns. Starting to stick. I want to turn this this way. Okay. Now, how big do you want this? I don't know how, what is that? 12, 14 inches maybe? You wanna be able to divide this dough into 12 pieces. So you don't want it too, too, too thin. I mean, I like my buns really nice and thick. So we'll start, we'll do that. This is just, a little bit too thick on this edge. Okay. Now, here's our almond mixture. I just love this stuff, it's so nice. Now just spread it out. You can see how it's pulling the dough even. That's fine. This part takes a little time. It's hard spreading this stuff on this soft, soft dough. Now we're going to get our pears and we're going to lay our pears down on top of it. And afterwards, after we form, finish forming these, I'm going to have to let them rise again. But this time it'll rise much faster. So maybe, oh, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe as much as an hour. I love the combination of pears and almonds. It's just, and the cinnamon just brings it to another level. It's so good. These make, these are just absolutely wonderful. And when we're done, this isn't the end. After we're done and they're nice and cooled out of the oven, we are going to make a caramel icing to go on top of them. Yum. And I want to use up all of these pears. Could you use another fruit? I don't know. You probably could do peaches in here. I'm not really sure. I haven't tried it. That's up to you if you want to try it. Could you do plums, perhaps? 
Okay, we're almost there. I just want to make sure we don't miss any. You want to make sure that there's plum in every bite. I mean pear, not plum. Okay, that's the end of that. All right, now, roll it up. And you're not rolling tight, tight, tight. Getting rid of some of that excess flour. Try to bring this a little closer to me so I can work with it. All right, now. Make a little log. What are we gonna put these on? Okay. I have here what is known as a traditional cinnamon bun, sticky bun, pan, whatever you wanna call it. This is a 13 by 13 square. And I'm only going to put nine in here. When most people use these to make sticky buns, they, you know, put all 12 in and they're bumped up and then you kind of break them apart. I kind of like them a little more freestanding. So I kind of give them a little bit more room so I have like an individual looking bun. And the excess, the other three, I'm going to bake in these little paper baking cups that you can find just about anywhere now. This is the large one. I'm guessing that's what, six, seven inches across. So we'll try both and see how they work out. So now in half, then in half, and then in thirds. And again, <clears throat> these will, we'll put these aside to rise for 45 minutes to an hour before baking. Okay. I'm going to try these in one of these. Push it down just a little bit, not too much. I don't want to deflate it completely. You can see all those lovely pears in there. Isn't that lovely? Okay. I'm trying to, when I put them down, I'm trying to round them up so they're a little bit, not oval, but round. These will touch a little bit because they're so big and nice and fluffy. I'm only going to fit six in here because these are much bigger than I thought they would be. Last time I made them, I was able to fit nine in here. So I'm going to have to do three more of those, but you get the idea. So I will just get some more of these pans. I'll make some more of these and then we'll just leave them to rise. I'll show you what they look like when they're risen before I put them in the oven. Our buns have been sitting off to the side rising and here they are. Um, I've got the other one over there still rising because I'm only going to bake two at a time because of my, I like baking only on one shelf. I don't trust my oven and you got to keep rotating and anyways, these have risen beautifully. They're much bigger than I thought they would be. So we're going to put these in a 350 degree oven 
for 30 to 45 minutes. It really depends. You're going to have to just keep checking. You can stick a toothpick in to see if it comes out clean. Last batch I did of these was 33 minutes. So we're going to put these in and I'll show you what they look like when they come out. Here are our pear and almond cinnamon buns. As you can see, the ones in the contained uh, papers look pretty good. You know, they, they kept their shape. These spread out a little bit more and got a lot bigger. They're both going to taste just as good. So I'm going to take these off. These I have to leave in the pan at least another five minutes because they're screaming hot. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to put these aside and after they cool off, I'll show you how to make the caramel frosting that goes on top. While our buns are cooling, I'm going to make the caramel frosting, or I'm going to start the caramel frosting. In my pot over here, I have a quarter of a cup of butter, which I am melting. To that, I'm going to add one third of a cup of heavy cream. And I'm also going to add one half cup of light brown sugar. And now we just have to wait until that mixture comes to a boil. And when it does, we'll take it off the heat and we have to kind of let it cool down for about five or six minutes just so that it's not still boiling hot before we add the confectioner's sugar. And we're going to add one and a half cups of confectioner's sugar to finish this off. Then after the frosting's made, we will frost our buns and top them with some chopped uh, almonds. So I'm going to chop those in my wonderful little chopper here. Just a rough chop. Okay, we'll put that off to the side. Now I just have to wait for this to boil. These buns are so delicious. I had something similar when we were on a trip this past October. We went to a uh, bakery kind of out on a peninsula in Iceland and it's listed as one of the nicest bakeries in Iceland and it really was. They had some phenomenal stuff. We had a great sandwich there and then for dessert we had one of these um, cinnamon rolls a flat cinnamon roll and what they did is they kind of scooped out a little middle and they put in some uh, pastry cream, vanilla pastry cream and then they put a piece of um, apricot on it and then they covered it in this icing, this caramel icing and then they drizzled chocolate over that. It was absolutely delicious. You never know where you're going to find a great treat. Almost there. Okay, it's bubbling and boiling, so I'm just going to take it off the heat and let it sit here for five or six minutes before I add the confectioner's sugar. Our mixture has been sitting for a few minutes. Now let's add our confectioner's sugar. It's a half a cup. One cup. Just mix that up a little bit. Because you never can tell. I don't want to put in the full one and a half cups and then find out it's too thick. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to need more. And another half cup. Push that off to the side. This isn't like the kind of a frosting that, it's more like a glaze, a thick glaze. A 
because then it will go on liquidy, but it will then set. So let's do a couple of these. I'm trying to get some of those lumps out of it. Okay. Let's take one of these. Okay. Using a soup ladle, whatever works. Give it a nice and some nuts. So there's one done in the in the casing. Let's do one of these. Oh, it smells delicious. Now I'm just going to keep on coating these and putting nuts on them and then later on the coffee's going on having one. <laughs>